Thank you for coming back to part two of the video. What you're going to see now, if you take a look at the Saturday data, is that some of the data repeats. And if the data repeats, the deviation is going to be the same. The squared deviation is going to be the same as well. So what we can do is add in a frequency column right here and it takes away the need to do all of the work for the same variable. So we're going to redo the work for Saturday and show you how that works. Since there are two 41s, all we have to do is write the 41 once under the x value and say under the frequency column that there are two of them. Then there is 132, and there's one of them, and there are three 38s, so 38, and there are three of them. Remember when you go to calculate the mean, you're taking the frequency and multiplying it by the x value. So there are two 41s, and that just saves you from having to write 41 plus 41. There's 132, and there's three 38s. Again, just saving you from having to write it out three times. Now, you divide it by the sum of the frequencies, and the sum of the frequencies is equal to six, and you get 38. So remember how to find the mean when you have frequencies. The frequency multiplied by the data, do that for each of them, add it up, divide by the sum of the frequencies. Now you're going to take the deviation just like you did before. So the data minus the mean, so that's three, data minus the mean, data minus the mean, and you're going to square it just like you did before, now what you do is you add this extra column, and what you're going to do is take the deviation squared so you're going to take this column and you're going to multiply it by the frequency because that 9 occurred twice and the 0 occurred 3 times. So we had two 9's, we just have 136 and we have three zeros. So this you can do the one times 36, but since it's still 36, you don't have to do it with the one. Now you're gonna add all of them up. And you're still going to get 54. All of the rest of the work is the same. Divide by five to get 10.8 and then square root to get 3.29. So when you have frequencies you can shorten your work by just adding in these extra columns. may not have been a big deal for this because there was only six pieces of data but if you have a lot of data this could be a real time saver. So right over here is what we did for each step. So we calculated the mean, we subtracted the mean from each observation, that was the deviation, then what we did is we squared the deviation then 
multiply the values by the frequencies if there are some. We added all of those results together. Now you divide by n minus 1 if you're using a sample and you divide by n if you're using a population. So that's important to note. I'll explain why later. So if you're using a sample, you divide by n minus 1. If you're using a population or census, you divide by n. And then lastly, take the square root. So just some information about the standard deviation. It is the measure of spread that is most commonly used. So it's versus the range, something called the interquartile range, which is what you will learn tomorrow, and the variance. The variance is this number right here. So it's the number before you square root it. So that's why here we said the variance is the average squared deviation of each number from the mean of the data. So the deviation of each number is right here, squaring it right here, and it's the average because we're, we're adding them all up and dividing by how many there are. So that's the variance and the standard deviation is just its square root. So the standard deviation is only used to measure how the data is spread around the mean. The standard deviation is never negative. The standard deviation is sensitive to outliers. A single outlier can raise the standard deviation and in turn distort the picture of spread. For data with approximately the same mean, the greater the spread, the greater the standard deviation. So you can see here, on Sunday, there was a bigger spread, a bigger standard deviation, which means the data for Sunday was more spread out or less consistent, and the data for Saturday was less spread out or more consistent. If all values of a data set are the same, the standard deviation is zero because each value is equal to the mean. The standard deviation is most useful when comparing the consistency of two or more similar data sets. Most of the data is usually within one standard deviation of the mean. What that means is if your mean is 38, and your standard deviation is approximately 3, then most of the data would be between 35 and 40. Not always, but usually. And you can see here, that's almost all of the data is between 35 and 41. And you get 35 and 41 from subtracting 3 from the mean and adding 3 from the mean. We'll do more work on that later on in the unit. So if you're using a census versus the sample, this is the way the formula works. So the only difference is that was the standard deviation. That was x bar. And you're using n instead of n minus 1. So that's the only difference. So the formula for the sample standard deviation has n minus 1 in the denominator, and the formula for the population standard deviation has capital N in the denominator. The use of n minus 1 in the denominator compensates for the fact that a sample taken from a population tends to underestimate the deviations in the population. So because 
samples are smaller than populations or sa census. They found that if you divide by n minus 1 instead of n, it was closer to the standard deviation of the population. So that's the only reason why it's done with n minus 1 instead of n. So that's what you need to know about the standard deviation in terms of how to calculate it by hand. If there's any of this that you didn't understand, please make note of it and ask your teacher in class the next day. What we'll be doing in class the next day is learning how to do this work on the computer. So, thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.